Hello, everybody. Uh, this is DFS Chan coming to you to talk about um, March 19th, uh, LOL DFS slate. Um, it's a, it's a going to be a five game slate again. So that's very exciting. Uh, three games in China and two games in Korea. So yeah, let's dive in. So one, one thing I would like to point out before we dive into the matchups is that in the LPL in China, um, the COVID cases have gone up again. So they are actually allowing uh, all the teams play from their respective uh, game houses. So wherever they live and practice um, and do the scrim, like scrimmages, uh, that, that's exactly where they're going to be playing from, from. So they're not going to be playing in person. Um, so, you know, for what it's worth, that could benefit some teams and that could hurt some teams. So we'll see what happens there. And I'll kind of point out um, if there are teams that I think will play better, um, you know, internally, like without going on the stage, um, I, I will point that out as well. Um, and then in Korea, there is a little caveat to the second matchup today. Um, Fred Abrion versus Damon Kia. I'll just point out up front that you know, Fred Abrion had a lot of uh, COVID cases internally. They, I think they had almost every single player in the LCK, like uh, LCK on the LCK team, but also on the challenger squad. Um, they had a lot of the players, uh, you know, testing positive before. So they actually had to forfeit one game before. Um, but now they are fully expected to be back, at least all the starters in the LCK. So that's why I have these five starters back but maybe the sports books don't think that. So I, I couldn't, I could not find any odds in that matchup for that matchup. So for what it's worth, that's where I have it. But I saw on Fred Abrion's Twitter feed that all their uh, starters, usual starters uh, should be back today. So yeah, since we're talking about the Korean matchups, let's dive into the LCK matchup. Um, this is an expected lineup, like I said, um, but uh, you know, 99% of the time they, they should be correct. Um, I know the other day DRX started their backup AD carry instead of theft. That hurt us a lot, um, in my opinion. My prediction was based on the fact that theft was going to start, but he did not. They actually started Taeyun, their backup AD carry. So, you know, that really hurt them and they lost, ended up losing 2-0 to zero to Dawan Kia. But anyway... So it could happen late in the season if the teams have clinched their, you know, their playoff spots or if the teams have given up. I mean, they can give the other players, you know, in their squad a few more chances to try it out um, just to see how he looks. So that that's the inherent risk um, that um, can happen, you know, toward the end of the split. So anyway, the first matchup on, in, the, in Korea is Nongshim Red Force versus Hanwha Life. Uh, NS is a slight favorite at minus 175 over HLE. Um, I, you know, I, I projected this too, but Hanwha Life is projected to be the worst team in, in the LTK. Um, and they've shown some good things here and there, especially earlier in the split. But toward the end of the split, the past, let's say the past couple months, the past couple uh, past month or so I mean they they've been really really bad so just you know for what it's worth I think they're still gonna lose here um, I think Nongshim I know they are having their own struggles here too but I just feel like Nongshim is a better team um, uh, you know especially on the roster uh, you know I think Con Kana is not gonna dominate Dudu in the top lane and then Dread and on fleek I think Dread has a little slight of edge there and then BDD cares. Cares actually has been playing playing pretty well, and BDD has not. So I think it actually the the, the advantage in the mid lane actually goes toward HLE probably. So um, sorry about the noises. Sorry. All right. Um. Anyway, sorry about that, guys. Um, and yeah, in the in the bottom lane, Sam D and Vista have not been that good. So Ghost and Peter, I think, will will play much better. Um, I think that's an out 
you know, I think I think no shim is gonna be, you know, having an advantage in almost every single lane. I think Hanoi Life um, at this point I probably have given up um, on their season. So I just feel like Nong Shim is going to, you know, I think Nong Shim <clears throat> just has more talent. I mean, both teams are eliminated from the playoffs, um, but I think Nong Shim is going to win today. And then uh, Freddie Brion, um, and like I said, they're going to have their regular starters back. But Damon Kia, I mean, you know, like, you can eat, I mean, even if the sports books had odds on this, Damon Kia would have been a huge favorite. I mean, that's probably at like minus. 200, three, well, probably minus 300 or 400. Um, Dominic Kia needs this game for playoffs um, seeding purposes. I know they just beat DRX, um, but DRX is having a game next tomorrow, I think, over uh, against T1. So I think it's going to be a tough matchup against DRX, but um, Dominic Kia needs this win to make, make sure they solidify that, you know, that number three seed. So I think Dominic Kia is going to try very hard. Um, and they've shown that, you know, they've shown some great things against DRX the other day. So I fully expect Dominic Kia to win here. Um, so really, I mean, I think both favorites in the LCK today are going to end up winning. So, and then in the LPL, it's between RNG and UP. Um, RNG starting the regular starter, same for UP. Um, RNG, in my opinion, is probably the top two teams in my opinion in China. Um, I know that as soon as Ben has been gaining his form, I know that everybody else has been playing well except for maybe Wei. I know Xiaohu has been playing well. Um, Ming has been playing well, but Gala has been all right. And then Wei has been all right in my opinion, but UP Ultra Prime does not really scare me. Um, I know Allies has been playing well and then Crying and Elk have been playing well but I just feel like this is a huge outmatch um, in favor of RNG. I think I fully expect RNG to win the series today. And that kill upside should be pretty good as well for this matchup for DFS purposes. And then EDG versus Rare Adam. Um, EDG is sticking with Flandre in the top lane. And then Rare Adam is start, uh, sticking with Yu Yanja in the support position. Rare Adam actually has been playing well, except for the last match. Um, you know, they lost to, I think, top is the top esports, maybe. Let me take a look at it real quick. Um, what's the JDG? I'm trying to, trying to remember. These odds are weird. Somebody says positive. Hmm. What the hell? Why is it hard? I'm trying to see why. Trying to understand, better understand why the odds are, why RNG is a slight underdog here. Hmm. That might be wrong. Let me see Bovada. RNG is at plus odds. Yeah, I don't, I don't know why. Let me see Pinnacle. I mean, you see these odds, RNG is a big favorite. Anyway, I don't know what's going on there. Anyway, um, like I said, I, I think regular starters, I mean, they're much more talented for RNG. All right, EDG, Rare Adam, let's look at that. Um, Rare Adam lost the, yep, it was JDG. Um, and then EDG lost the LNG. Both, both teams lost their respective matchups two to zero. Um, let's see, EDG beat BLG, Rare Adam beat uh, WBG, Rare Adam beat Ultra Prime.
Yeah, I mean, like I said, I think where Adam, the same, same analysis applies that their bottom lane needs to get going in order for them to have a good chance to win. But against Viper and Mako, I fully expect EDG to uh, pull this off. Um, I'm actually going to have zero rare Adam today, probably. I'm um, taking my stance that EDG is going to win for sure. I just feel like, like I said, I think rare Adam's win condition is tied to Iboy and Yuyanja gaining the lead. Um, and then Cube, you know, doing his thing. But I fully expect Viper and Mako to kind of um, neutralize that win condition uh, against Rare Adam. And then Flandre definitely can hold his own against Cube, I think. So, and I prefer JJ Scout over Leanne's drive too. So I think DDG is going to win for sure. Um, and then Kill Upside should be pretty good. I don't think not, a, I don't think as good as RNG in the UP game, but you know, still should, should still be pretty good. And then the last matchup in China is between FPX versus Victory 5. Victory 5 is starting uh, Karsa here again in the jungle position. He is back from COVID issues that he was facing. Um, so that, sh that should be a huge bump uh, against FPX. Um, Xiao Liao Hu is starting in the, in the top position. And then Care is starting in the mid position again. Um, FPX looked has looked better more recently in my opinion but um like is a i mean you see here you, they've won three game three series in a row whereas uh, victory five has also won three three uh wins in a row but victory five is like probably one of the top two teams i think um that have been winning a lot of good game, uh, games against good opponents so i for what it's worth i think um Gonna be a really good matchup. Um, I think Rookie is gonna probably take care of business against Care. Rookie has been playing really well. Um, and I know Carsa is gonna be playing pretty well after, after coming back, after sitting out a couple games. Um, Rich, I know he's been, been doing his own thing, solid on his own. Low, like, your low kill participation percentage, but he actually is benefiting his team a lot by doing a lot of stuff that he's, he's doing by like pushing the map, putting map pressure into the top lane when he's by himself. And then his teammates end up getting other bigger objectives. So he's been really the sacrificial lamb for some of the objective fights that they've been doing. But either way, Victory 5 has been really solid game strategy wise, especially in the bottom lane. Um, but he, they're going to struggle a little bit against LWX and Hang because those guys are better and those guys are good. Um, so I don't, I'm not a huge fan of Fotig and BP got today. But um, just overall, um, let's see the, if there are any trends. Like I said, but FPX has been playing pretty well. They've won three games in a row, three series, series in a row. Um, but everything else, I mean, that's, that's, these are some bad losses. They've lost to Thunder Talk. They've lost to, um, where was it? Yeah, I mean, I think they've lost to, what is this? Yeah, Rare Adam. Rare Adam's been pretty good, so yeah. Anyway, this is for Victory 5, and they've won every single game except for JD Gaming. So I think JD Gaming's <clears throat> win conditions are tied to their the um sorry victory five um, their win condition is tied to uh, the rookie <clears throat> rookie in the mid lane and then jungle and Carsa and then the bottom lane does their own thing you know so I feel like that's those are the key pieces that you want to focus on when picking the players for DFS matchups. So for anyway, so for what it's worth, I think Victory 5 is still going to end up winning it. But FPX is definitely live, I think, in my opinion. So that's going to be an interesting matchup. I would actually give this a little more uh, kills uh, projection here, probably maybe to 27. Um, but for both how uh, at least my test tells me that they like to play fast. So, you know, that's what I have for you guys today. Um, I, like I said, I, I'm I'm choosing all the favorites today, boring, but really I, my analysis kind of led me to that, that direction. So RNG, EDG, V5, NS, and Damon Kia. I think Damon Kia is probably, probably the most sure thing and RNG is probably the most sure thing for any cash or optimal players like, you know, any, any, any of them out there. So 
But yeah, if you have any questions, let me know. Feel free to reach out uh, on Discord or, or on Twitter. If you uh, like the video, please hit the like button or subscribe button, you know, in our channel. Uh, and, you know, we, like I said, we provide videos and other, for other sports, you know, uh, especially the baseball that's about to start. So if you guys have any interest in that, please uh, hit the subscribe button. Thank you.